Hello and welcome to my shop. In today's video I'm going to be building this chisel rack. Let me show you some of its features. The whole cabinet portion is made of hard maple and I've edge banded the front of the casing with walnut so I'll be doing some veneer cutting in this video. Also the top of both sides are curved and I've wrapped walnut veneer around those curves. It's a very simple process and I'll show you how I did that. I've placed magnets in this piece to hold the chisel blades and it has two pull out drawers made of soft maple and I made the handles at the router table and the table saw. And it has hand cut dovetails. I used the Cat's Moses dovetail jig for these dovetails. I'll tell you more about that in the video, plus a whole lot more. So stick around, we're going to get busy. First I laid my chisels out and took a measurement of the approximate width and measured the space on the wall. For this project I have not made any plans. It's all going to be done on the fly. I have a general idea of what I want and I'm just going to build it. I have discovered over the years most of the valuable lessons are in the process of just figuring it out. I'll start at the table saw, rough cutting my material slightly over 3 inches in width since the cabinet itself will only be 3 inches deep. I will be using scraps and cutoffs from previous builds. In this project I will be using black walnut, hard maple, and soft maple. Once I have this done I'll move over to the miter saw and cut everything down to a rough length. During the milling process, I always like to cut larger and work down to my final size. Then I'll lay everything out and get an idea of the final piece and what it will look like. At the joiner, I'll flatten one face and joint the edge of each piece. Then I'll plane the boards down to their final thickness. All right, I've taken all my chisels. This, this stuff is still just rough roughed up. Uh, each side of each board is parallel to the other and this is 92 both of those sides. I still have to cut the board down to width and I still have to cut them to length and that's what I'm trying to figure out right now is the length that I'm going to need. I originally planned to make a four inch drawer, four inch deep drawer to go in the bottom of it and I got to thinking that's going to be so deep that stuff is going to get down in it and I'll have to empty a bunch of stuff out in order to get to what I need in the bottom. So I've decided to take one inch off of that. I'm going to make a three inch drawer and I'm going to make another three inch drawer to go in here to house more stuff such as maybe marking knives or whatever I determine I need to put in there. Back at the table saw I'll go ahead and cut all the boards down to three inches wide. Now using the miter sled, I'll square up one end and flip and cut the other end to the final length that I need. Now it's time to mark the layout for some dados. On the two side boards, which are 24 inches long and 3 quarters of an inch thick, I'll make a mark 3 inches up from the bottom of each board and another mark at 3 and 5 eighths. My shelf boards are 5 eighths of an inch thick so all these dados will be 5 eighths of an inch and 3 eighths of an inch deep. I will bring those marks across the board. From the 3 and 5 eighths inch mark I measure up 12 inches. This allows me room for all the chisels. I'll make another mark above that one at 5 eighths of an inch. Then from that mark, I'll mark up another three inches, and then again at three and five eighths above that. When I'm done, I have a mark at three inches, one at three and five eighths, one at fifteen and five eighths, one at sixteen and a quarter, nineteen and a quarter, and nineteen and seven eighths. All of these will be the locations for the three eighths inch dado. I mark one board and after lining up for the cut with the mark board, I cut the second board at the same setup. The two side boards will be mirror images of each other. On the back side of each board, a 3 inch by 5 eighths inch deep slot will be cut above the bottom shelf and below the second shelf to place the back supports. 
It will make sense in a minute. I lined both boards up with the cut and gang cut them both at the same time, making sure that I have them turned the right way since they are mirror images of each other. I don't want the cut to end up on the front side of one board and the back side of the other. They both need to be on the back. This is what I was talking about a minute ago with the three inch wide slot for the back support boards. This is how the main structure will come together. Okay, now you can probably get some kind of idea as to what this is gonna look like. There'll be a drawer right here that just actually pulls out and rests on this work surface that will hold uh, rasp and things of that nature. There'll be another drawer right here that I can pull out and just sit down here and it will hold uh, just whatever. Now I need to take the two sideboards back to the dado stack and notch out for a one inch wide by three quarter inch rail that will support the handle of the chisels by not allowing them to fall off the shelf. I'll cut both of these at the same time using the dado stack. I'll also put a three sixteenths inch round over across the inside and outside of the top of this rail. Now let's cut an angled piece to match the tilt of the chisels. I don't know what that angle is. It was easy to mate the board to the angle needed. I just placed a chisel in the rack like it would normally sit. Of course the tip of the chisel would touch but only the tip. I got the measurement from the distance between the chisel at the lowest point of the back support board, which in my case was 1 8 inch. I tilted my table saw blade to cut a strip that was 1 8 inch thick at one side to zero on the other across the width of the board. I also used a feather board to hold the piece tight against the fence. Then I laid that piece in the case and you can see here how the chisel lays flat against it. It is one eighth inch thick at the bottom to zero at the top. Then I laid all the chisels out inside the rack and spaced them by eye as evenly as possible. Then I outlined the location of each chisel to place the magnets in the best possible spots to hold the blades. Before adding the magnets, I'll need to permanently attach a strip to the back of the support board. I'll do this by using Type Bond 3 and some spring clamps. Just a little tip, I take advantage of this piece being thin and flexible. A lot of slipping around of the piece can be prevented by gluing half of it at one time. A couple of hours later, I'll remove the clamps and drill half inch holes to insert the magnets. Each chisel will be held in place by two magnets. I'll drill to a preset depth and later check my depth by actually laying a magnet in each hole and making sure it is even with or slightly below the surface. I'm going to be covering these with a piece of maple veneer and I want it to lay down flat against the surface. I use CA glue and some activator to hold each magnet in place. Once the veneer is placed over them and attached to the backboard, they can't go anywhere anyway. I'll apply glue to the surface around the magnets to, the, to secure the piece of veneer. I cut this veneer about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Now this cabinet is still not assembled. Everything is just held together with clamps at this point. Since the angled piece which holds the magnets and the veneer cover are both inside the rack and between the two sides, they can be attached as long as they are centered and three quarters of an inch of the backboard still go through the slots cut in the sideboards. Hope that makes sense. and I'll just apply some weight until the glue dries. Mm. 
Then I sanded everything to 180 grit and removed all of my pencil marks. I also wanted to add a curve to the top of each sideboard so I used a roll of tape and outlined it and I just cut that at the bandsaw and creeped upon my line by sanding. Then I used that piece as a template to make the other side, then repeated the same process. Once both pieces were cut out, I put them together in the vise and finalized the shaping with a rasp and then sanded. Now it's time to put this together. The three shells are attached first using glue only. I will check for square by measuring from corner to corner and use a clamp on my long side to pull in the square. Once square, I will attach the back support boards by gluing and screwing. Each support board will get two screws on either side and the screws will be countersunk. If any adjustments are needed, now is the time to do that before the glue sets up. Then I'll add the front rail with some glue and screws. Now let's make some walnut veneer to dress up the front of this rack. I'll start at the joiner with an 8 quarter piece of walnut. I'll joint one face and then holding the jointed face to the fence I'll joint one edge. Then flipping the board end over end, I'll joint the other edge at 90 to the face. It doesn't matter that the two edges are not parallel to each other, just as long as they are both at 90 to the face. At the table saw, I'll set my fence slightly over 1 8 of an inch. Placing the jointed face against the fence, I'll start cutting. Then raising my blade just slightly enough to cut over halfway through with the second cut. Then I'll flip the board over and cut the veneer off in one pass. Then I'll go back to the joiner and rejoint the face only, then back to the table saw to repeat until I have enough for the project. I'll mark at the top of the curve leaving some excess and then moving the piece around the curve and marking the bottom of it. At the bandsaw, I'll cut about two inches into a piece of three-quarter inch ply. I'll slide the curve onto the blade from the back side. Using a piece of the veneer, I'll set the depth of cut I'll need and then clamp the plywood down to the top of the bandsaw. This veneer is slightly over one-eighth inch in thickness and I will cut slots into it about three-quarter of the way through with about a curse width and thickness between each cut. As you can see here, it works perfectly, but we need to strengthen up those ribs and most definitely want to be careful when sanding. I'll be using a two-part wood filler from Minwax. Just apply the appropriate amount of hardener for the amount of filler and mix thoroughly. Now this stuff starts getting hard in about five minutes, so you won't have time to kill. Make sure you have everything you need ready to go. Pack the ribs of the cut full of filler. At this point it is soft and will squeeze out when you make the bend, but leaving the right amount to harden and strengthen the piece. Whatever wood glue you are going to be using, go ahead and put that on just like you normally would and spread it out. Next you will want to put your veneer on and make the bend just to have it in the right place. Then get a couple of clamps on the veneer and space them out some to prevent the piece from sliding around. You will want to get the curved part in place as soon as possible because the wood filler is going to harden faster than the PVA glue will. So get that clamp down and then you can go back and add more clamps to the rest of the veneer. After the glue dries, I'll take a flush trim bit and flush up the sides. On the inside, I could only trim up to the shells, but we'll fix that in a minute. Let's flush trim the ends first. Now 
and a good sharp marking knife will cut right through this thin veneer. And I've done the other side the same way. I started cutting to length the rest of the veneer, spreading glue and using tape as a clamp. Basically just edge banding the, the edges of the shelves. I want to put this piece of walnut here across this bottom, but I have messed up. And I didn't think about it when I done it, but I rounded over this edge of this. So what I'm going to do is, is slide this down. I'll run the round over across the edge of this. And hopefully I can slide this down just a little bit, cut it to fit. And between the round over of the maple behind it and the round over of the walnut on top of it, I'm hoping it just makes a pleasant little transition. It's Okay, off camera, I've cut it down to the length and the width that I need. Now I'm gonna take the router, put the round over bit back in it, and round this top over. And it's probably gonna look like two rounded over steps, which will be fine, it'll be fine. All right, we're gonna have to go at this old school. I tried it with the round over bit in the router, off camera, just tried it on a scrap piece. This is the same thickness as that one is and you can see what it did to it. It just splinters it all to pieces. So, to save my piece that I'm actually going to use, I'm going to just sand around over on it. Because this is, this is thin, it's just under an eighth of an inch. You may want to go get some coffee. Okay, that don't look too bad. I'm going to uh, glue that one down, and then as soon as the glue has time to dry on it, I got a little bit of sanding to do, and uh, we'll be ready. We'll be done with this, except for putting finish on. After flushing up the trim, I'll use a sharp chisel to fix the corners where the flush trim bit wouldn't reach, and then sand everything to 180. Now it's time to apply the finish, and just like the hand plane shells, I'll be using teak oil. I really like the way it makes the grain in the maple stand out, and it darkens the walnut even more. After letting it sit for a bit, I'll wipe all the excess off and allow it to dry. I'll pre-drill, countersink, and screw the rack to the wall. Now it's time to load it up and make some drawers. I was out of any hard maple that was long enough to use for these drawers, but I did have some scrap soft maple. And since they will be inside the case when not in use, it will be okay. Besides, these projects are cleaning up a lot of scraps and offcuts I had laying around the shop. After all the milling was done and the boards were all cut to length, it was time to cut the dovetails. Now these drawers are going to be three inches deep, meaning the tail boards are only going to be three inches long, which is way too short to use in a Porter Cable Dovetail Jig. I used to cut my dovetails by hand and still enjoy doing that, but I did get a Cat's Moses Dovetail Jig for Christmas this past December, and I've been wanting to try it out, so I'll be using that to cut these dovetails. There is tons of videos on hand cutting dovetails on YouTube. So I won't be going into depth with cutting these, but if you would like to see another video on hand cutting dovetails, leave me a comment below. I'll try putting that on my to-do list. I do, however, have videos already on this channel for setup and different techniques using the Porter Cable 4216 dovetail jig. I'll leave links to those videos in the description below. I have not used this jig before now. It has laid in my shop since December of last year, 2021. But I do have to say, if you are a beginner at cutting dovetails, and you are somewhat of a traditionalist, this may be the jig for you to practice with. I can see how it would help train your muscle memory. Even with three inch tail boards, it was still so easy to do. Of course, sharp tools make a huge difference as well. 
I just lay my tails out like I normally would, cut using the jig and using my tail board to mark and lay out for my pins, using chisels to straighten everything up. Once I had everything fitting together like it should, I took my pieces over to the table saw and cut a slot on the inside bottom to hold the drawer bottom. I would make a cut, move the fence, cut again, just creeping up on it until I had the slot opened up enough to fit a quarter inch wide piece of plywood. Then I cut the drawer bottom using the table saw and the miter saw. Now it's time to glue the drawers up, clamp and set aside to dry. While that's drying, I'll work some on the walnut veneer to face the drawers with. I start by flattening one face and joining one edge. I'll cut to length and rip down to width, oversize of course. I'll set my fence to make a slightly over a 1 8 inch cut. Turn the flat side against the fence. I'll start making passes raising the blade a little each time. Once I am more than halfway through the width of the board, I will flip it end over end and run it through finishing the cut. And since I'll be needing two pieces, I'll flatten the board again and repeat. After the glue is dried, I'll remove the clamps and sand the drawer cases, just cleaning up any squeeze out there may have been. Now these drawers were made oversized too, just a little bit in height. So I'll cut around the top at the table saw and using a block plane, I'll fit them to the opening in the rack. Then using my five and a half, I'll set the blade depth to basically nothing. I don't want the blade grabbing the grain and breaking my piece. I'll use the, the plane kind of as a scraper until I get the finish that I want. Then I'll glue the walnut on using Type Bond 3 and just applying some weight. While that dries, I need to make some handles. I used a short piece of hard maple that had already been milled, so no work there. I took a paneling bit in the router table and used that profile to make my handles. I would make a cut, raise the bit, and make another cut. I repeated this until I got the look that I wanted. You can do this with most router bits. Once I had the profile I wanted, I cut it off at the table saw and repeated until I had enough material to make the handles. Then I added a quarter inch round over to the top and bottom of the front side only. Then I cut to length, which mine were four inches. Then I put the same quarter inch round over on the face side of each end and sanded. When the glue had dried on the drawer fronts, I took them to the bandsaw and cut the excess off and used a flush trim bit and palm router to even everything up with the drawer. I measured and laid out the placement of the handles using blue tape. This helps also in keeping glue off of your piece. Then I glued and clamped the handles in place. Then with the palm router, I rounded over the inside edge of the drawer tops. Now it's time to make this walnut and maple come alive. You just can't beat the look of walnut and maple together. And the tea coil makes the dovetails really shine, even if this drawer case is made of the same species of wood. enjoyed the video and I hope you found something useful in it. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, thanks for watching.